You guys, I thought it was a down. much better yeah. episode last night. You liked it a lot more than I did. I it was so cl- it could have been great. It could have been great, and it just what kept it from being great? Had they give me more draft room, more of those <laughs> discussions about the Judon thing, and it's I mean they they went pretty in depth, Dan. It's only on a that. couple minutes. And everything else was was was, was Travis Bajant screaming and the Eberflus daughters and I I, it's, I don't know where any of that goes. I love the football stuff. And you know what I realized it's missing? Have we yet gotten? Correct me if I'm wrong, but have we gotten the coaches around the table talking about players? It's a staple of Hard Knocks. I don't think we have. Yes. We haven't gotten we we've gotten the running back coach talking about players. We we we've gotten have, a little bit of that, and we, we got Shane Ian Waldron Cunningham. a little bit. Yeah, we have Ian Cunningham and like Ryan Poles talking about players. Did you know the shot I mean? Like yeah. they're all sitting at the end of the day. They're all, they're all coming together after a practice, and they're all tired, and the you know guys got their spit cups or whatever, and they're actually talking about. You know the roster talking about players, talking about who's doing what. We haven't, I like a, I don't know. I, I just, I, I would say more football and less filler, and it could be really I, good. I thought that they gave you a lot more football yesterday, and I thought, I thought it was the best episode easily in the first five minutes. In, in just you seeing Eberflus talk with Caleb about how the 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 games have gone, how the practices go. Them giving you that much access to what they were thinking on Judon and and letting you know like how they evaluated it and telling you the reason that we didn't make this move is because he wouldn't sign an extension with us. Like that's to me, like that that was a v- very much a nod to what we saw with hard knocks with the giants Mm -hmm. where we got to see how they discuss things literally at the highest level with Ryan pole sitting there with Kevin Warren talking about it with all of the people on the pro personnel side, discussing it with them. I I thought it was a really good episode last night. That's, that's how I felt. But I also feel like if you're watching bears, hard knocks and you don't live here and you don't know, you don't know how the Bears operate. You're probably not that into it. But after what I thought was a fairly content poor episode last week, we did get more. I thought the same thing, Lawrence, about the Giants nod when it came to Judon. I thought that that was pretty important when it came to why they didn't talk about him. And even also just the process when it came to the third round draft pick. And then we saw what ultimately happened. That ended up being the price. But that where they were talking about the exchange for how many years they got with Austin Booker. Like that's that's the yes. most transparent I've seen the Bears about any transaction. Even more so than what we saw in the discussion with Ryan Poles and Peter King, you know, talking mm-hmm. about the first overall pick. I feel like this was at least real time somewhat where you're seeing some sort of thought process as to how they're prioritizing. There are a couple comments by Poles that stuck with me. One is we're just sort of offhandedly. He who was he talking to? Is that is it Matt Feinstein? Is that say the director of football administration? I know they it? have two directors of player personnel. We found out in that in that. Yeah, I think, was it the guy with the mustache? I, I think it was the guy who was just wearing a sweatshirt and shorts. I think it was Matt Feinstein. Who that's and that's not Ruthie Polinsky's husband, is it? That's not okay because I, I I know that there's one of the guys in, that works there, but he said. Poles said something like, if he gets 20 sacks, I'm going to be sick. Yeah. Like that kind of admission, uh, is, is that was cool. And the other thing, right after they solidified the Booker pick, when he said, like, I know him and his family well. You're, you're going to like him. He's going to be good. Like that, that moment of self-confidence, almost saying it to himself, but saying it to everybody else, that's kind of a cool thing. To hear that in the moment, no one had ever really seen the guy before, and he's like, "All right, this is this is good. You're going to like him." As if say, "We, I know I just gave up a fourth round pick, a future fourth, but it, it's going to be worth it." 
Uh, I will say this. Did you guys hear Biggs this morning talking about Austin Booker? Biggs said that he had collected a, a form of consensus and some people really liked him. And then other people on other teams didn't want anything to do mm-hmm. with him. So uh, that seems like a very wide pendulum swing there. That's what Dane Brugler I mean, told us. Th- that's what a, that's what a lot of people thought, that he would be someone that would be drafted high next year. Which makes sense. I mean, I I like it. I like the transaction that they got for him. I just worry when, you know, when you're talking about Judon, for example, versus Austin Booker, that's that's a... I hope that that comparison works out the way you want it to. Well, what was it, it the stat have, that he gave? It may have been worth the risk for the Bears to go ahead and make the Judon move. But, I mean, I understand because they've done so well overall with trades and they actually have capital, it m- might have made sense depending on what you think your goals are. And whether you think your goals are attainable in year one of Caleb. When he was explaining, it was with Kevin Warren, I think, when he said that they had Judon ranked 50th in wins added for this season. You know, they showed the outside of the prepared packet that they're, the analytics people put together. And he said, by comparison, that Sweat was 14th. Is that right? So if you figure there's two starting defensive ends on every team, that gives you 60. And if he and if Judon is 50th by their rankings, you know, eh, okay. That's a bottom level starting defensive end. And I just found it I, I don't is that a proprietary number that they use or is that available to us, the idea of war, basically? I think it's their metrics. And if my biggest indication of that is just, again, things that they've talked about where they didn't pan out like they wanted, you know, how they see it. I know they go off of relative athletic score a lot when it comes to scouting, but they they favor that almost more than actual on-field production when it comes to college players, I would say more than almost. But when it comes to their rubric, I'm still waiting for it to come through more. See, I'm. I, I if they if they are able to take some of the threads of the footbally stuff and continue more of that, I'll be. If there's there's two episodes left. Yes. Okay. So the next one will probably be about cuts. Has to be right. Yeah, but they don't show the cuts anymore, right? That's, they don't show that's the a cuts, new but policy. They can, but they can react to the cuts. I wonder if they're going to pick up the Colin Johnson thread. You know, he had the good game. They go to the coffee shop with him. And now that's so that just kind of dropped for now in favor of the punters Australian. I mean, they and, had and to good. get to that at some point. Like that had to be one of the storylines. It was interesting that they had him driving, and I didn't know where that was leading. Quite literally, I thought he was going to get lost or something. But then he's like, he's driving in a car, and now he's. At the game. He did get lost. He had to ask for directions. He said Michigan to the guy who said Michigan Avenue. But that was that was a guy there, though. I thought he was learning. That I was thought already he in... didn't know where to park. Yeah. Or how yeah. No, I thought line. he was asking, literally asking, like, where do I turn to somebody on the street? No, what? that was one of the, the traffic guys. There was two scenes. There was two, like, yeah. there was a scene right before that. I thought they were yeah. both traffic people. Okay. Also, Cairo so- Santos hazing him or giving him <laughs> a little bit of hell about do you know how to drive was pretty funny in my opinion. Yeah, especially yeah, considering another international player. I do think that if, if you're not going to give the typical hard knock stuff, I have no problem with Tyson Bajan, who clearly gets the bit, right? And then his dad being the bit. I have no problem with that being on TV. Like, to me, if you're not going to get the storylines that you desire, like, let the guy who really wants to be part of the story and and Mr. Bajan be that dude. Yeah, I thought it was the perfect amount of Travis Bajan. For me, the perfect amount's none. Did you guys not notice the part where Tyson Bajan said he had to buy 81 tickets? At a hundred dollars yeah. a piece, he doesn't make enough money for that. No, that that's that's a lot for a preseason for, game. Yeah, who, how many? You have that many people. You I don't even know eighty-one people. 
Like, he's going to probably start, right? Like, you're going to have to start a game. How much are you paying for tickets in? How many are you buying? I need to know the answers to these things. I mean, there, there could have been, he could have promised this out to maybe like an organization or, although I guess they probably would have put a spotlight on that if that was the case. Like, it could have been his church. You know what I mean? Like, there, there could, that could be the reason why there were so many because that, that seems like for, and maybe it was easier than being like, look, I don't know if I can get you into some regular season games. So let's just knock out everyone comes to Chicago for the game that I'm probably going to play the most in. And then everyone could go back to West Virginia and be cool. I, I will say, did you guys notice the guy who had the legit mohawk? Like, not the faux hawk. He had a whole mohawk next to... Tyson Bajan's dad. Like, it was shaved on the sides with the actual strip. Like, it just wasn't fluffed up. Yeah. The, I'm like, who's that guy? I need to know more about this man. I, I think Travis Bajan has people who, like, are already, he has, seems to have, like, big people in gray t-shirts who follow him around. But okay, like, that's, that's, I completely understand that being on Hard Knocks. When I saw it based on what happened the episode before, I was like, perfect. This makes sense. He likes being on TV. You know, he's he's a what seems like a fun-loving individual. Yes. That's why, like, I thought I thought it was fine. You that, have him on. He does the thing. He's an arm wrestler. You tell that story. You're giving me the eye. You're an arm wrestler. Okay. I would have been very curious if Tyson Bajan talked about his Welsh granddad and tried to speak Welsh. That would have been the plot twist that, because that seems like the hardest language of all time. Plus, granddad was a fisherman. I'll give him that. Yeah, and did you see how he illustrated his tattoo progress? Mm -hmm. Like, the plane and then looking up at the plane. He was a then... pilot on the quote of, like, I was born to fly or something like that. And that's he's got that quote on him. Okay, all good. And didn't he say, like, his, his family doesn't like tattoos? I, at first, I thought he said everyone yes. in my family has tattoos. Then he's like, no one else in my Oh, okay, well. Fine. But then they they grew to understand what he was doing. He's they trying doing to... some storytelling on his body. Yep. We just got an angry text about Matt Eberflus's daughters. Well, they, they were on for like thirty seconds. What's the problem? They're clearly there to support their dad. I agree that it was superfluous. It didn't. It doesn't do anything so what it's hard knocks <laughs> right. That's, yeah. texter I don't, texter I, hey you ever watch hard knocks before i don't know if you know this but we're on the radio for four hours at a time and i don't necessarily know that all of it is super important I, i'm just throwing that out there and i also don't think kevin warren is sitting at a table talking about where chairs go is is and that was hey, just them hey. advertising the Soldier Field idea. Uh, it's called the Stadium. Front. And and they consulted Lil Dirk on that too, okay? So yes. come on. I don't think we got enough Lil Dirk in this episode. We did not. Right? Like that, He's like, hey, have a good practice. Takes pictures, then leaves. I'm like, what? Come well, he, on. he said Chicago to break down the huddle. Yeah, I, I need more of that. Okay. I want more celebrities. Shout out to Austin Reed. And tell me about the Smohawk, dude. Who's friends with the Bajans? I need to know.